Hi guys, so we are back. We are going to tackle Genesis chapter 19, still first book of the Bible. Chapter 19, we're going to tackle it in two parts because I think there are two stories being told here. And I want to make sure we highlight them correctly without making you sit for 75 hours to hear it all. So we are just going to cover verses 1 through 23. And then we'll jump into the rest of 19 in the next clip. So first thing is, we have just left Abraham. Abraham is sitting outside and three men walk by. He recognizes God when he sees him. And these three men are messengers of God or angels who are traveling. And he stops them, feeds them, has a conversation with them. And during that conversation, they say, we'll be back at a particular point in time. It's, we will mark the passage of time in a year when we come back that your wife is going to have a son. That baby that was promised to you is on his way. And there is, there is a conversation where Abraham attempts to save the city of Sodom and Gomorrah from destruction that God has promised by kind of bargaining with God or how many righteous people it would take to save an entire city. And God said, if there are just 10. So the uh, men that were with Abraham leave, they continue on their journey. And it starts off with two angels come to Sodom in the evening. There were three men who Abraham saw when he had a conversation and fed them, but two angels come to Sodom in the evening. Um, Two men get there and Lot is sitting in the gate of Sodom. So these cities have these gates around them or walls around them to protect them, to keep the stuff that belongs in, in, and the stuff that belongs out, out. And so Lot is sitting in this gateway. This is a, a, a place where you would sit, where men would come and they would talk and exchange ideas. When you had a problem or a question, you could find somebody to assist you with this. And so he is sitting there and he sees these angels approaching. And when they approach, he sees angels approaching and he bows down to them. He says, hey, come into my house. It's becoming evening and I want you to come into my house. I want you to stay with me and, you know, rest yourself, have a meal, get clean and, and stay with me all night. Like, don't leave, just be in my house. He knows the neighborhood he lives in. And so they say, no, 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 we're going to stay out here. We're going to, you know, set up camp out here in the, in the, um, in the streets, in the square, in the, in the center of town. We're going to stay here. They know what mission they're on and what it is they're trying to see. And Lot also knows the place that they're in and what they're about to see. So he's like, no, 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 no. In verse three, it says that he pressed upon them greatly or he urged them strongly. He's like, no, 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 no. You have to come to my house. You have got to come in. Don't waste any time. Don't stay here. Like, let me just cook you. I got, I got my wife is an amazing cook. We're going to throw on a little goat. If you want some, I got a chicken. If you want that, like, tell me what you want. We can, we can, we got a calf. You know, there's, there's a bull in the back. I'll slice him up, get you a little rib, a little steak or something, whatever it is that you want. Let me, let me know what that is. And I'll make it like come to my house. And it says that he, urged them strongly like he begged he pulled on them to come and as they came he they go into the house and they have a feast he feeds them well he treats them amazingly because he recognized God when he saw him much like his uncle Abraham recognized God when he saw him and it says in verse four before they could go to bed before they could lay down the men of the city the men of Sodom, it clarifies and lets you know who is there and what's going on. It says both young and old, all the people, all the people to the last man. It says all the people to the last man, literally everybody, all the men of this city have come to this man's door and they surround his house. This is a very, very bad situation. And Lot is trying to figure out how to respect and honor the God that he serves and how to take care of God's servants and not lose everything in the process. He recognizes the, the danger in the situation he's in. And so it says in verse five, that they call out to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Where are the men that came into your house? Lot saw angels. Angels came, he saw them. And the people saw men. 
Be careful to make sure that you recognize when you're in the presence of God. Do not allow your lust, your desires, your flesh to just wipe out your whole, your spidey senses, all that tingle, whatever it is that you get when you're in the presence of God. Do not allow that to be, to be taken from you. So you're not even sensitive to when you're in the presence of God. And so it says that they wanted Lot to send the men out so that they could know him, them. This right here, that word to know them, we saw it when we talked about um, the man and the woman in the garden or Adam and Eve, that um, he said that he knew her and she conceived. And that's how we've seen it whenever we've kind of gone through that um, Abram knew Hagar and she conceived. And so we understand what they're asking for here. And they're saying, bring them out. Go and bring them out. We want to we want to get to know these guys. We want to see them. We want to experience them. We want to know what this is about. We got some strangers in the city. And I am certain that it, as well as God has put together some people, when he sends angels and these perfect bodies, they come perfect. So I'm pretty certain they were something to look at. And they allowed their desires, their flesh to overrule the thing that says you are in the presence of God. And so Lot went out of the door. And shut the door after him. So he went outside and closed the door behind him and was like, look, y'all gonna have to get up off my property. I need to back up. I'm begging you, don't do this. I know who's in here. I know what's going on. I know that I am right now standing between you and God. And what you don't want to do is take yourself too far and, and walk right out of God's grace. Because right now at this point, they are operating under the grace of God. God said, I'm certain that if I gave them the opportunity to redeem themselves by sending someone in to just see if their wickedness can be curtailed enough to allow 10 righteous people to be there. If just 10 people stood for the right thing, I wouldn't destroy this city. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a messenger. I'm going to send angels. I'm going to send my own self in there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my own eyes and ears in there just so I could see if they would be cautious enough to pull back enough to save themselves. Will they recognize when God is in their midst? And he said, just don't be so wicked. Do not be so wicked. A lot of people, again, hang their hat on the sin of these men wanting him to bring these the men that are in his house out. The men of the city wanting to get to know the men inside of his house. They hang their hat on that. The reality is it's the sin. It's all of the everything that they were doing. Not the one thing, because it wasn't one thing. It, it, it was the everything they were doing. So he says, look, don't, don't be like this. Don't be this wicked. Come on now. I'm standing between you and God. Please don't do this. And he said, hey, I'm willing to sacrifice something of myself because I know what's getting ready. I know who this is. I know who something is happening. When God sends an angel into a space, I know something's getting ready to happen. And he said, look, I got two daughters. I got two daughters. I will, let, me, let me send them out and, 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 and I'm going to let you do what works for you. And we'll figure that out. But please do not harm these strangers. They're under my care. They're under my protection. I don't, the, I can't, I cannot turn over these strangers, these foreigners. I have brought them into my home with a, with a desire and requirement to protect them. They don't know what, they don't know what's going on here. They don't know how this goes down. They don't know how this this city comes alive. They don't know what this is. So it's my job to make sure they are protected and so they can move on to the next place. Just, just go on back home. Don't let this happen. And in verse nine, the people replied, stand back. And then they started talking trash about Lot. This dude came here as a stranger. He's not even one of us. Now he want to act like he can decide how we're going to behave. He going he gonna to play the judge. We, we don't need him to tell us what to do. I promise you, we're going to do worse to you than we do to them if you continue to stay in the way. We've we, we, we been letting you live here peacefully and we've been letting you do what you do. But just for the record, if you continue to stand in the way, it's going to be worse for you than it is for them. And they began to press. They began to press on him. So they pushing him trying to get through the house still. They are now ready to put hands on him. And... 
they, they it says that they came near to the door to break it. They was about to break into this man's house over this. Like that group thing got out of control. Everybody started swarming. Things got out of hand and they just pressed forward and they were getting ready to break down the door of this man's house. And it says that in verse 10, the men inside reached, pulled their hand and reached forth and brought Lot into the house and closed the door. So if these, if Lot has closed the door behind him, and they are pressing against the door like they're going to break it down. Everybody's putting all their pressure and weight on this door. And they open the door and they pull a lot inside and close the door back. That right there, they've been like, how they do that and we ain't get inside? <laughs> but it doesn't trigger anybody because at this point, they are so wrapped up in their own desires and their own flesh that they have turned off their ability to understand that something bigger and greater than them is happening. And it says in verse 11, they struck with blindness, all the men who were at the door of the house, both small and great, young and old. We got young boys. We got old men. We got everybody out here acting a fool. And it said it struck them with blindness. Everybody that was close to the door, not everybody in the crowd, but everybody that was close to the door was struck with blindness and they could not find the door. If you are standing here banging on a door and your eyes get hit and suddenly you can't even figure out where to put your hands to bang on the door anymore. I don't know why we ain't all turn around. At that point, I'm like, God, uh, clearly, I'm sorry. I'm out here acting a fool. Could you just help me? They didn't even have a presence of mind to do that. But at this point, this blindness hits and they can't find the door. So the crowd begins to disperse and they can move. So in verse 12, it says, the men said to Lot or the angels that are in the house with him. Have you anyone else here? Do you have son-in-laws, sons, daughters, or anyone in this city? Bring them out. Get them out of here. Round them up. If there's anybody who, any other family member, anybody else that you got right here, and I'm telling you who you can bring. You can't bring your, your best friend. You can't bring, you know, the guy who cut your hair. You can't, you can't, nah. Mm -mm. Do you have family, son-in-laws, sons, daughters, Anyone that you have in this city, bring them out of this city. Get them here. And it says in verse 13, we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against this people has become great before the Lord. The Lord sent us to destroy it. God sent us here to test and see if they would just if they would just pull themselves together for a few minutes, if they could just get themselves together for one night long enough for us to say there's some, there's, there's still some left in them or have they turned themselves so fully over to their wickedness that they won't even recognize God. And so they have seen everything they needed to see. It is done. They are about to destroy this place. God said it's going to happen. So let me figure out who you got here and get them out of this city. Because you're righteous. You did the right thing. We're going to save you. We're not going to destroy you with the city. We're going to pull you out of it. So in verse 14, it says, Lot went out. He left his house. And he said to his son-in-laws who were to marry his daughter. These are son-in-laws who were outside. It said, every man of Sodom was there. So they was part of the crowd acting the fool at this man's house. That's probably why they weren't that interested when he was like, I'm going to send my daughters out. They was like, I just wait till the wedding. I'm good on that. <laughs> but here it says he went to them. and He was like, hey, get up, get yourselves together, pack your grip. God is about to destroy this city. And I need you to come with me to be saved. I'm telling you, this is it. This is all you got. This is your only opportunity and warning. And they thought he was joking. He said, that's a joke. Why would God destroy this city? That's a joke. Who told you? Do not, do not decide that the message that you get for salvation is not real because it don't line up with what you think. Because God himself didn't come and say, you need to get out of here and you ain't get no boom and no lightning and thunder or whatever it is we think that God is going to give you when he's warning you. Do not decide that the message that God sends to save you is not the right kind of message and you decide it's not right. They thought he was joking and didn't go. It says in verse 14, when the morning dawned, they had overnight 
depending on the season, that fight have been just eight short hours or 10, 12 hours. They didn't have time to pack their whole house. They didn't have time to, to go and get everything they need and pack a caravan and get a moving truck or hire some people or get some boxes. They didn't have time to do any of that stuff. He It says, when the morning dawned. They had the whole tussle and everything the night before. He had to go see by the son-in-laws who thought he was joking and did not come. These are the men he had chosen and said can marry his daughters. They were getting ready to join families and they didn't listen. And it says the angels urged him in the morning, get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Take what you got in this house and leave or else you'll be consumed. Here is your warning. You got to go. Because this is not going to stop because you move slow. So this is as the morning is dawning. This is when you get that first crack of light on the horizon. And it says in verse 16, he lingered. This man has gone through a lot in his life. <laughs> he is a lot and he has gone through a lot. We have to remember that at one point he and his, he had left his home country and his family, all the extended aunts, uncles, and cousins and everything. And he left and he traveled with his uncle Abram at the time, who becomes Abraham. He travels with him and they walk all over the place and they get to this spot where they, be, they have amassed so much wealth and so many possessions that the land can no longer support them being together. And then he leaves and sets up his own life. This is where he chose to live. The land is good. He has wealth. He has material possessions. He has cattle. He has money. He has property. He has all these things here. And he is in a position where now I got to leave it all. What do I take? What of all these, all these possessions I have, all this that I have amassed, what do I take with me? And he lingers. Not that he was like, I don't think God going to destroy the city. But he just was like, what do I do? What do I do? Where am I going? What do, what's happening here? He's thinking fast because he got an entire family counting on him to make a decision. And so it says the men seized him and his wife and two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and left him outside of the city. They brought him outside of the city. So this same city that had all this foolishness going on the night before, they brought him outside of the city. He grabbed these men, these angels, grabbed him by the hand and brought him outside of the city. And it says in verse 17, when they had brought him outside, they said, run for your life. Run for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the hills or else you will be consumed. Run for your life. Don't stop. Don't look back. Don't do any of these things. Just run and keep running. And go directly to the hills. Don't deviate. I'm telling you where to go or else you're going to be consumed. Every, everything over here is getting ready to be destroyed. And if you do not follow these instructions specifically, you're not going to make it. You're going to be consumed with the rest of them. There is no room for disobedience. There's no room for questions, no room for thoughts. Just do what I'm telling you to do. And Lot said, oh, no, 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 no. We can't go to the whole, the, 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 the hills. If, if I found favor with you, if, if, if you could just give me a few moments to talk to you and ask you a question, I love and appreciate and thank you for saving my life. It, you are the kindest person to be able to do that, but I, I can't go to the hills. It's, it's, it, the hills are scary. It's terrifying out there. I don't know how I'm going to support my family out there in the hills. I don't know what I'm going to do in the hills. Can you leave us a city? A city gives me the opportunity to buy something, to trade something, to grow something. But in the hills, I don't know what's out there. And he says in verse 20, there is a city there that we can go to. It's far enough away from their foolishness that we should be able to go and be okay. Can, can you save that city? Can you not consume that one little city so that we can go there and we'll be saved? And in verse 21, one of the angels responds with the verse, voice of the Lord. Very well, I grant you this favor too. I will not overthrow the city you have spoken of. Hurry up and escape for there's nothing I can do until you get there. You got to go fast because this is happening and I need you to move. 
And it says that the sun had risen on the earth when Lot got to that city, Zor. When Lot gets to that city, the sun has risen. This whole thing started. They were in their house when the sun began to crack the sky. It don't take hours for the sun to, to rise. And they had gotten from his house to outside of the city and gotten into another city that is a distance away. They had moved themselves through the city, out of the city, and in what is usually the sunrise is what, 10, 15 minutes? These angels, are they got some, some God speed. And these angels move them outside of the city. These things are happening very fast. This conversation is happening very quickly. Okay, so we're going to recap. The angels that Abram had just finished talking to and bargaining with have come to the city looking to see if there are 10 righteous men, at least 10 righteous people that are in this city. And they get there and realize that young and old, all the men are in here acting a fool. They banging on the door, trying to get them out the house, coming at lot about it, trying to make something crazy happen. And they strike these men with blindness so they can back up off the house. Give a lot of warning. Round up your family. Get them all here because we're getting ready to destroy this city. So you got to get your people out. And when they go, so he goes and talks to those son-in-laws of his. And man, they think he's joking. So what I want us to remember is do not despise the warnings. Just because it doesn't come in the way that you thought it should. Just because it doesn't look the way you thought or hear or sound the way you think it should sound. Do not despise those warnings that you get. If somebody says destruction is coming because you out here acting a fool, get yourself together. Don't just keep doubling down on it. You don't know what you're talking about. You ain't God. You can't tell me nothing. That might be a messenger from God. But they think he's joking. They don't go. He gets there and he is in the morning, in the time it took for the sun to crack the sky and reach the top to become fully day. These angels talk to Lot, get him out of the city. He has asked for a particular small city nearby to be saved so that they can go there and they could live there instead of having to flee to the hills because the hills he was worried about what would happen there. And they move and they get him out of that city and we are getting ready to jump right into what happens next. But what I want us to do is understand that when you are in a situation where you have allowed your desires, when you have allowed your flesh, when you have allowed your lust for things, for people, places, whatever it is, to become, to make you so numb that you don't recognize when God is in the midst, you are in danger. Make sure that you will always be sensitive to and respond to God when he is in your midst. Do not despise your warnings. Do not despise Anything that comes up and when you have an opportunity to serve a stranger, make sure that you treat them right. We used to live by the golden rule, treat others the way you would have them treat you. And I want you to make sure that we are doing that. Sometimes we say love people the way you love yourself. And that's cool, but some of us don't really have a lot of self-love. So we're going to treat people the way we want them to treat us. I want to be treated well, so I'm going to treat people well. So you guys be blessed and remember, take care of your neighbors. Have a great one.